Uh, welcome to this meeting. My name is Maria Elena Barras. I lead the Food Action Alliance and Country and Regional Partnerships in the Food System team at the World Economic Forum. On behalf of all of us at the forum, we would like to welcome you to this meeting on galvanizing game changers for the future of food. Today's session has uh, one very clear objective. We would like to deliver concrete game-changing initiatives that will accelerate systemic transformation and deliver action on the ground. Leveraging the international momentum that we have towards the 2021 Food Systems Summit, which offers a runway for action, a deadline for results, and a stronger position to act together. This uh, session will have three parts. An opening panel, which will be live streamed. A second section following uh, where participants will divide into assigned breakout groups per region for deep dive discussion uh, and rich interactive dialogue on delivering game changers around the globe. The third and final section, we will come back into plenary for a closing panel uh, on the pathways for action and next steps. Before we begin, uh, just a few uh, housekeeping rules. We encourage all participants to stay on video, remain muted while not speaking. Although we will not have questions during the opening panel, we do uh, want you to share your thoughts and questions using the chat function, so we encourage you to do that. We will have the opportunity for a lively and interactive dialogue during the breakout discussions. We encourage your active participation there. For technical assistance, please reach uh, our staff that will, uh, his contact is in our chat. Um, and with that, uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce you to the moderator of the opening panel on setting the context on the future of food, Mr. Vibe Dreyer, Chairman of the Managing Board of Rebobank. The live streaming will commence now. Mr. Dreyer, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Marilena, for, uh, for us for the opening and the introduction. And thank you all for, uh, for being with us, um, especially, of course, the people on our panel that uh, will join in this conversation at the start of this uh, important session where uh, we will explore what it actually takes to get to action to move to a more sustainable food supply to the planet. Um, I'm honored to do this. Um, it will be um, somewhat delayed in, in our start and therefore I will keep my introduction as short as possible so that our speakers have all the opportunity to express their views and respond to each other's points in the, in the conversation. But let me underscore the importance of this session and the subject itself. It's quite obvious to all of you because you've joined in that transitioning the global food supply to feed around 10 billion people in 2050 at a sustainable way, in a sustainable way, is a crucial challenge that is all the more important given that we've had through the, uh, the focus on climate, on CO2 reductions, on biodiversity and on social equality, the, these parts of the SDGs, we've had all the attention there. And food has been in the background of many of the SDGs. And it's crucial that we, uh, in the year to come, take the opportunity to address this head on and explore what and how food ought to change so that we can feed the world uh, sustainably towards 2050. And with me, I have these fantastic panelists um, coming from all parts of the world uh, that have this important relationship to the subject. And I'm so glad that you're here. Um, Maria Juliana Gruis, First Lady of Colombia, uh, Your Excellency, thank you for being with us at this very early hour in your beautiful country. Uh, we're so happy that you're with us and I, I do hope uh, that we all enjoy your, your contributions. We also have uh, Agnes Kalibata, the UN Special Envoy for the United Nations Food S Systems Summit. I think um, in my world, everybody knows Agnes, but I'm not sure that everybody on this, uh, uh, online now knows her. And Agnes, we're very happy that you're here. You play such an important role for the, uh, the uh, Food Summit for next year. Then we have with us Gilbert Fossum Ongu, President, International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAT, based out of Italy. Uh, Gilbert, I'm again very glad to see you. You know that, but we are also very glad that you're here and we look forward to your contributions. And then we have Estrella Penunia, the Asian uh, Farmers Association for Sustainable Rural Development, AFA, from the Philippines. And thank you for being with us. It's so good that we can connect um, in this virtual world. Before we start, there is obviously uh, the COVID-19 crisis raving. And um, I've been asked many times how this affects the transition to a more sustainable food supply, as if uh, that challenge is not uh, sort of faded away. I think uh, if there, I'd just like to leave you with one thought, which is this, that 
many of the world's greatest system changes have happened at the back end of a crisis, when there was a free mind to think, a free mind to think how a, a change can be shaped more fundamentally against all odds. I think we're in that phase of COVID-19. We know it's still raving around, but we do have now the time to reflect on the substantial change that food requires for the world. And with that mindset, I would love to, each of our speakers to um, maybe respond one-on-one -on -one to an opening question, but by that, give their, their room to speak uh, in a focused manner. And bear in mind that we might be speaking to many people that have not been in this issue all of their lives. And therefore, it is also something that we like to invite them into this important conversation. Um, Dr. Kalibata, Agnes, for, for friends, can we, um, can we start with you? The uh, UN Secretary General has announced that the Food Systems Summit is a solution summit. It needs to be focused on change and action. In your view, as a special envoy to that summit, uh, a crucial role in the design of the program, what does success look like for that summit, as you would uh, phrase it? Agnes. Thank you, Web. I just want to make sure that you can hear me very well. Um, I, can hear, I can hear you well, I can also see you. Very good, very good. Thank you. So, um, and thank you for, for the question. Um, like you said, the, the Secretary General launched the Food Systems Summit last year. And this year, um, we, we are in the preparatory process. For me, success looks like three things. One, we have to build consensus among all of us globally. We have um, a, such a population, uh, 7.5 uh, billion people, all of us eat every day. It's extremely important for us to understand that how we produce food, how we access food, how food is added value to, uh, 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 how we consume food are all very important decisions that in, impact and influence our food system. So for me, the, the most important thing, if we can build consensus among all of us, that the decisions we make every day when we take food are very critical to our food system is extremely important. So my role, number one, is to ensure that we build that consensus. So number two, we need to ensure that this summit becomes a people's summit that it reaches everybody. And we are putting in place um, two types of dialogue. There's a dialogue that is happening through countries at country level, and there's a dialogue that is going to, to happen through champions, people that already believe in, in, in the needed change of the food system that we have. So those types of dialogues are very critical to ensure that we bring people into, into uh, the conversation and make sure that whether it's the work we are doing with the science of the summit, because you have a scientific group that is working on the science of the summit, whether it's the work we are doing through action tracks that is looking at game-changing initiatives, which many of you uh, are part of already, uh, looking at game-changing initiatives and really trying to understand that those initiatives are not meant for 10 million people, but for billions of people out there, 690 million people need food. Uh, those initiatives are going to reach them. The people that have dietary challenges, are those initiatives going to reach them? Are we going to be able to reduce waste with these initiatives? So anyway, ensuring that these conversations happen at all levels of society through the dialogues we've designed is very, very important. The third one is all these conversations will be useless if we can't translate them into solutions and commitments to do things differently. And we are going to try to, we will make sure we get commitments at, at state level, at government level, at country level. But we also need to get commitments at community level. We also need to get commitments at individual level. This is something we all need personally to commit to. Our food system will not change if we cannot individually commit to that change. So I just wanted, you said that many of the people here may not have had an opportunity to interact with the food system summit before. And my call here today is to make sure that you find ways of connecting with the Food Systems Summit through the dialogues at country level, through the dialogues in a box that we are putting online, through the youth engagements, through the champions, through any form, but uh, through the action tracks. Mm -hmm. But find ways of engaging and ensure that your voice is heard, but also ensure you do something different so that when we come to this, this year, to, to this, the summit this next year, we actually have tangible commitments. We have actually raised ambition enough to turn around where our world is going. So that's 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 what success would look like for me, uh, Weber. Thank you very much, uh, Agnes. And, uh, and uh, a people summit that is almost uh, its success guaranteed because much of the contact has already started before the, the summit. Very nice and action oriented. Uh, maybe if I turn to President Hongbo, uh, given your role in the summit and your championship in the Food Action Alliance, a very action-oriented alliance, 
how can we best mobilize the public-private partnerships to support for to, to support food system transformations at country level? I think your lens is very much on how can we make it happen at the country level in your mind. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vibe, and good morning, good afternoon to uh, all of you. How can we really uh, make this uh, happen? We we will have to be pragmatic. We know that the food system summit there is a process to wait the you know international process as we know to. However, it's going to be important that practitioners that we have, we really look at what is happening today uh, on, the, on the ground. This is where the, the different platform and the actions uh, and the initiative that uh, um, several of us are having on the ground come to play. And it's going to be important um, in the next coming months, if, if not weeks, to know what have been the lesson learned from the different actions that uh, uh, is happening in the ground. And based on those lessons, um, what can we extrapolate? What can we therefore um, put to scale and bring them as lesson learned, either through the action tracks or through the dialogue that uh, Agnes referred to, bring them to the, to, to, the, to the summit, which is one. The second point is where also given the fact that we have several initiatives at one point, if at all possible, and I believe uh, uh, West could play a, a, a good role in that, is to be able to compare notes. Uh, if Rabobank is having an action in certain countries, uh, if, if I deserve some actions in a different country, is there some commonality there? Is there some kind of uh, cross-fertilization that we can join our force together in, in bring that, uh, that up. Thirdly, um, it's going to be very, I mean, that is not necessarily new, but I really want to re uh, repeat this. It's going to be quite important, the role of the private sector. And therefore, how do we make sure that the private sector is very well represented and has its, uh, its, uh, its say? So we really need to combine through the dialogue and other actions, there's a communication side. I'm sure most of you here or those that are listening to us, they are maybe convinced about the need to have the private sector on the table. However, we shouldn't take that for granted. We do still have um, a lot of colleagues, um, stakeholders, that might think that you know, the, the, the traditional cliche that the private sector is this, the private sector is that. Um, we really need to also make sure we communicate that the role that the private sector has to play there and giving concrete example, maybe through the action, how the complementarity about the private sector, the public sector. A typical example for me is the fact that we know that the private sector, of course, can provide financing, but sometimes we tend to forget that the private sector can provide also knowledge that others do not necessarily um, have. And sometimes the private sector to be able to, bring, to be a game a changer, need to ensure that the policy environment is also addressed. That's where the multilateral and the government, the public side, uh, um, come, to, uh, come to play. So those are the very three points that I want to make to you on how we can proceed with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, President Hongbo. Uh, can I turn to um, maybe different than the order that you might expect, uh, Maria Julia Ruiz, uh, Your Excellency, First Lady of Colombia. We are so glad that you're here. And I would love to hear um, as we are all inspired by the changes that take shape, um, Colombia has a strong potential to become a breadbasket for the world, a potential that is, uh, is, that is so much promising. And we know that various initiatives are taking place to advance food security, nutrition, environmental sustainability, reducing the carbon emissions, amongst others. And in many, you are involved. How can a multi-stakeholder action support the Colombia's plan and vision for food systems to, to be achieved? and to achieve all the SDGs. We are looking forward to your inspirational experience uh, so early in your morning. Greetings to all the panelists and participants in this uh, great event. Thank you so much. Well, I, I would have to say and start by saying that I'm a partnerships believer. And uh, as uh, Colombia's first lady, I decided to shape my role in the light of the SDG 17. That's partnerships for the goals. And I did it calling up on two major capacities that identify this responsibility that are advocacy and convening. They more or less say multi-sectoral action. 
So uh, now I have the honor to serve the country as Goodwill Ambassador for SDG 70. And that, as I say, is because I truly embrace the value of multi-stakeholder partnerships that bring together that private sector that you were mentioning, the businesses, the governments, the civil society, academia, international uh, sector and co-international cooperation. And um, from my, my work, I've been actually uh, focusing my flagships on nutrition. And uh, that from a very personal and holistic perspective, with two lines of action of nourishing the body and nourishing the soul. And uh, I've been doing that under a government umbrellas, which is the Great Alliance for Nutrition that was launched last year in which actors from different sectors summon so we can expand the micronutrients offer for pregnant moms, nursing mothers, children and adolescents. And the main aim and the goal was to contribute to their cognitive and physical development. And uh, that alliance has something really important. And what I'm sharing now with you is what you were saying before. We need to understand, we have to pass and move on from ideas, from proposals to concrete actions. So this national alliance, what did was that set up two major goals that was really impacting hopefully not only diminishing, but eradicating malnutrition in children. And the second one was strengthening food security at home. That those two goals are already a chain, a step by step. First, you, you, you engage with the children and then you secure their environment. So you know that they're not gonna fail again. And um, that has been for me an incredible successful case that has also been combined with another extraordinary opportunity that I had in my capacity, that is to participate at the Columbia's Intersectoral Commission on Food Security and Nutrition. And that for me, as I said, is a great example of success of multi-sectoral work towards one specific purpose. Since all its members now work as, has been so accurate from my perspective, that we have shown a significant decrease in the malnutrition indicator in children. I'm speaking of a number of above 45% diminished in this malnutrition indicator compared to last year, which is incredible at the light of the pandemic. And this is because we were engaged in working together from a collaborative, propositive and active perspective. And something that I would like to, to, to highlight as well, that is also relevant at the light of this commission, is the formulation of the National Policy for Prevention and Reduction of Food Losses and Wastes. This for me is so relevant because somehow engages the whole food system to intervene the processes and generate contributions to make them sustainable. So uh, I do believe we have lots of challenges still but if we are able to coordinate different sectors to understand we can commit and act from our different roles to one main purpose, our, our story will be different. Now with, with the case of food losses and waste, we have a tremendous challenge and is to really articulate the actors uh, of all the stages of the food system at the territorial level, considering the particularities of a country as Colombia, which is full of regions. We have six different regions that are completely different, one from each other. So um, I do believe that's the key element to understand that all of us, we can, we can really make a specific contribution. In this case, as we're doing in Colombia, on nutrition for specific SDG goals, on uh, um, prevention and reduction of food waste and losses on SDG 12.3, uh, I believe, we, we do have the target. So um, we, we do need to understand that much of the effort of national, local, international development actor right now focuses directly or indirectly on generating institutional mechanisms for nutrition and zero hunger. But uh, 
I, I do believe that we also need to amplify the spectrum. And however, the current environmental and social context requires greater responsibilities, we do have to get, have a greater response and capacity to radical transformation of paradigms and ultimately the whole capacity for social and economic reinvention. And I can finalize without saying that even at the light of COVID pandemic, there are two words that for me are essential and key element for reinvention. We proved and we were proved that we are interconnected. Thus, we must be co-responsible. That for me is a practical and a concrete solution. Thank you for, uh, for uh, giving that vivid and uh, passionate introduction again so early in your morning, but I think the case of Colombia is one that we should all be inspired by, by the level of change that it materializes and how much it's an example, an example of system change where all actors come together. Thank you so much for that introduction. I do want to give time also to Mrs. Penunia, um, who uh, has a special role as an, on the advisory committee of the Food Systems Summit. How, may I ask you, take a lens on the farmers. How can we empower the farmers to be at the center and providing solutions and co-shaping an agenda for food system transformation with a lens on farmers, um, I guess more broadly than just one country? And maybe can you leave your introduction really short because otherwise we'll be hurt by the principle of online conferencing, which is that the end <laughs> time is fixed. So please keep your introduction short. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to World Economic Forum for giving us this opportunity, this space to also voice our, our interest and our, uh, uh, our agenda. So what we want to say is that, uh, first of all, but very short, APA is a regional farmers organizations. We have 13 million small scale women and men family farmers uh, in 16 countries now in, in Asia. And what we want to say is that uh, in the whole uh, uh, discourse on food systems, no, we can say that farmers, usually farmers are viewed as victims as victims because we are most affected by climate change, by uh, all the, uh, the brokenness of this food system. But what we also, also want to say is that we are solution providers. So when the IFAD president talked about the private sector, we can say that as a, as a aggregation, the family farmers are the biggest uh, private sector because we invest in agriculture, the tools, the knowledge, the work that we do. And so we have solutions because we, especially when we are grouped together as organizations and cooperatives, we can consolidate our finances, like one peso contribution can mean millions if we are big. And also we have knowledge. So our cooperatives especially can act as private sector, can go into production, value addition, marketing and distribution. In during COVID, one very concrete example as a solution provider is that an all women family farmers cooperative of indigenous community establish a partnership with an urban poor neighborhood to have a farmer market. In that way, the urban poor neighborhood who are locked down are able to have a supply of fresh food, local food from the, from the uh, farming community. So uh, with sustainable food systems, we, uh, to, to be sustainable, we always would like to have this message uh, to involve family farmers, through their organizations and cooperatives as equal partners, not just beneficiaries of programs and services of foundations or of if we have partnership with family farmers as as equal partners, so we can we can uh, join together in solutions that that provide rights to farmers over lands and natural resources that promote sustainable agriculture that promotes cooperatives that promotes partnerships between co-op family farmers and consumers and that and that promotes policies that advocates for policies with government so that policies will be favorable to family farmers and if policies are favorable to family farmers, then young farmers will be attracted or the youth 
will be attracted to farming. So this all we think is our contribution as family farmers to the work on sustainable food system. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Estrella Penunia from, uh, from the Philippines. Uh, so we've covered the globe. Uh, we've also covered the time. Uh, and um, what I thought was exciting about the introductions of all of you, and, and of course, we had to sort of piece it together in a quick half hour, uh, is that I think Agnes, as the organizer of the conference, uh, the, the Food Summit next year, articulated that this ought to be a people's summit, as you said it, where consensus is built around great lines of attack, a change where, where game-changing experiments will be scaled up. And so thank you for bringing that thought. Uh, and, and I think what, um, what President Hongbu then said is, by all means, if this is going to be relevant at the country level, this ought to be practical. And we need to make sure that we learn from working initiatives and scale them up. And we need to ensure that the private sector steps to the plate. So that's a challenge of that lens into the conference as well. And then um, Maria Ruiz, Ruiz from um, Colombia, um, um, First Lady of Colombia, so eloquently uh, illustrated that it can be done if you look at the success that Colombia is playing. So a, a flagship case uh, is where she said, if you take subjects like nutrition and food security, uh, you can make it happen if you link up the real partnerships and collaborate. And Colombia has been such a good example of that in recent years that we should all celebrate and take as an example also to the summit. And finally, um, uh, Mrs. Benunia, articulated that we ought to make sure that the farmer becomes the hero of the change ahead and not as a problem, but as a part of the solution, where if the farmer can do this, we have the key to the change that lies ahead. So in a sense, we've discussed quickly the, the Rubik's Cube of uh, creating a food system change to, um, to the world that we need to do because uh, 10 billion people need to be fed sustainably in 2050. That requires action at the country level that requires action at the actors level, private sector farmers, and it requires at a number action at a number of thematic levels, such as nutrition and, and, and uh, favorable circumstances. I think that is our challenge together. I hope you've enjoyed the introductions of these speakers. I'm, I apologize for not having had a second round of questions, um, but that, um, that is because the subject is so rich in your first round of introductions. Thank you for being with us. I hope that the balance of this uh, Sustainability Development Impact Summit uh, online uh, will bring you even more fruits of insight uh, and as Agnes said so eloquently that brings the conclusion of the summit of next year ahead of the summit. Thank you for joining us and uh, Maria Elena over to you.